When you think of warm and rugged clothing for men, what comes to mind? Well, I can tell you for me, it's heavy wool shirts and leather and socks and gloves and hats and stuff like that. And the deal is that most of the time, no matter who makes these items, they all sort of follow the same template. But there is one garment which really transcends workwear and style. It could be used both casually and formally. Something that very, very few others can. And the colloquial name for this is the fisherman sweater, or if you're across the pond, the jumper. Now there's a lot to get into here, including the fascinating history of the fisherman sweater, but first, let's go get a drink. Now you've undoubtedly seen these things before. Everywhere from Ivy League campuses to the backs of Maine fishermen, the fisherman sweater, which is kind of just a general term for a chunky woolen sweater, is really uh, uh, timeless and it has a great history and it's rooted in workwear and all that stuff that I just love about garments and hopefully you do too. Now I do have a fisherman sweater here to show you, but before we get into that piece, let's look at the history of this thing. Now I have to beg your forgiveness right off the bat. I'm gonna try to pronounce some words here of islands and names that I simply probably am gonna butcher. So please just <laughs> give me a little leeway. No one's really certain exactly when this sweater was invented, but most do agree that its origin can be traced to an island 400 miles southeast of the Irish Aran Islands called Guernsey, whose main trade was fishing. The cold and wet conditions that fishermen faced meant that their sweaters needed to keep them warm, allow them to move and be repaired as needed. The answer was a navy blue, tightly woven sweater called a Ganza sweater and it's believed that these sweaters were being made as early as the 15th century. Over time, the stitches became more complex, and the sweater gained popularity with unique differences depending on its origin. For example, the sweaters woven in Ireland were different than those woven in Scotland, and it's believed that the stitching held different meanings, ranging from your home island to the more symbolic and almost superstitious. The Aran Islands became especially well known for their sweaters, with each one taking anywhere from three to six weeks to complete. One of the coolest things that I had heard about these sweaters is that each one was stitched with family names so that if a fisherman were lost at sea, their body could be identified by the sweater that they wore. Unfortunately, this turned out to be a myth, and it likely stemmed from the play Riders to the Sea. An interesting thing happened when the Congested Districts Board sent British and Scottish fishermen and their families to the Aran Islands to help improve their fishing industry. Irish wool was thicker than fine Scottish wool, and the stitching was more vast, whereas the Scottish variety typically only had patterns at the top yoke of the sweater, whereas the Aran sweaters were entirely covered with stitch patterns. In 1935, these popular sweaters began to be sold in Dublin markets. The natural properties of wool meant that it kept the wearer warm even when it was wet. And the natural lanolin oil in unwashed wool meant that it was also pretty water resistant since wool fibers can be flexed over 20,000 times without breaking. These sweaters also lasted a long time and they could be repaired as needed. Sometime later, Vogue printed a picture of Grace Kelly wearing a fisherman sweater and demand on the US side boomed with the first exports to the United States beginning in the 1950s from Standon and Spiddle Co. Galloway. In fact, May and Martin Standon employed over 700 knitters, and this became an important part of the Aran Islands economy. One of the first pop culture appearances of the Aran sweater was the Irish folk music group the Clancy Brothers and Tom Makem, who appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show. My personal favorite, though, is Ernest Hemingway who was evidently a fan of chunky wool sweaters. In this famous photo though, he's actually wearing a Norwegian variant, but the aesthetic is very much the same. You can find fisherman sweaters in every corner of pop culture, from Elvis Presley to Steve McQueen to Taylor Swift, but more importantly, on the backs of hardworking men and women across the world. So you may be wondering where the best place to buy a good fisherman sweater is. Well, like anything, the internet is awash with overpriced examples made from cotton or polyester, so it pays to do a little research. Filson had a decent, but expensive, model last year, and similar outdoor brands usually carry some variation of a fisherman sweater, but my favorite place to get one is through Aaron's Sweater Market. Their sweaters are authentic, reasonably priced, and they do carry a pretty big selection. Although most of these, they're not hand-woven, they're machine-woven, which is okay for most of us. Some other sources are Blarney Woolen Mills, O'Connell's, and if you're looking for a sweater worthy of James Bond level cool, John Smedley is your place. 
their Bobby sweater made an appearance in the movie Skyfall. Since this sweater began as workwear, it can look great in a variety of scenarios from ratty jeans and boots to layered over a dress shirt and tie. My personal favorite though is over a chambray shirt and layered underneath a waxed jacket like this one from Tom Beckby. It's a kind of rugged formal if there is such a thing and you could dress it up with some moleskin or tweed if you want to or dress it down with some denim, totally your call. Now the model I have here is from Aaron Sweater Market and it's their heavyweight merino wool Aaron Sweater in the color Claret. It's chunky but slim cut and even though the traditional color for these sweaters is ivory, I really like the somewhat unexpected crimson of this model. It features cable knit and honeycomb patterns and is made in Ireland from 100% merino wool, but the biggest surprise is that this model was on sale for only $99, which is less than half of the Filson model. But you know the thing that I really love about these sweaters is it really embodies what I try to do on this channel. This is a piece which could be used in a wide variety of scenarios. If you're working, you could definitely wear this. This is where these things began as workwear. If you want something that can be dressed up and is somewhat rugged and unexpected, especially when everybody's wearing these very fine merino wool sweaters, well, this is perfect. Something that has a great long history, doesn't look out of place in almost any scenario, and will last a very long time. That's exactly what a fisherman's sweater is. Now there's plenty of them out there and lots and lots of places to choose from. So make sure that you choose wisely. But I wanna hear your stories about fisherman sweaters, whether you like the aesthetic, whether you don't, um, whether you're wearing one right now, lounging around watching my videos. But please let me know in the comment section below. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thank you so much. I'll catch you next time. Thank you.